From the Blues Singers, 10 Who Rock the World, Mahalia Jackson by Julius Lester, illustrated by Lisa Cohen. Question of the week. How does an artist use music to inspire others? In this selection, the author is talking to his granddaughter. He wants her to know about the kind of music that he loves, the blues. First, he explains that the blues is not just a feeling. It's a kind of music. Then he tells her about a great singer he, who knew all about the blues. So what are the blues? Well, the blues are like having the flu in your feelings, but instead of your nose being stuffed up, it's your heart that feels like it needs blowing. Everybody gets the blues, even children. But the blues is not only a feeling, it's also a kind of music that cures the blues. The words of a blues song might be sad, but the music and the beat wrap around your heart like one of your grandmother's hugs. The roots of the big blues go back to slavery. If anything would give you the blues, it was slavery. Imagine somebody owning you like I own a car, like I own my car. Just like I can sell my car to anybody who has the money, somebody could sell you and me the same way. One of the ways black people fought against slavery was with a breath was with the breath in their bodies. They wove hope on the air by singing songs called spirituals, songs for the spirit. Their bodies were in slavery, but that didn't mean their spirits had to be buried in sorrow as white as fog. Slavery ended in 1865, but freedom didn't take its place. The people who had owned the slaves still owned the land. But could the slaves truly be free if they had to keep working for the same people who had owned them? Blues music probably started something like this. Somebody was out in the field working one day. She knew she would be working from sunup to sundown on somebody's farm making 50 cents a day until the day she died. Thinking about it made her heart burn as if he had been struck by lightning. The pain was so bad she didn't know what to do. And suddenly she started singing. Got a hurtin' in my heart, feels like I'm going to die. Got a hurtin' in my heart, feels like I'm going to die. I feel like a bird whose wings will never fly. Singing those few words made her feel a little better, and everybody who heard her felt a little better too. They took the gospel feeling and put it into the blues. Mahalia Jackson, 1911 to 1972, was not a blues singer. She sang church songs, gospel, but she knew blues and brought the blues feelings into church music. Other people, like Ray Charles and Aretha Franklin, grew up singing gospel too, but they took the gospel feeling and put it into the blues. The words in a gospel song and the words in the blues will be different, but both can make you start, mo start moaning like you've just bitten into the best fried chicken anybody ever made. So that's why you have to know about Mahalia Jackson. Even if she didn't sing the blues, she learned a lot from listening to blues singers, and blues singers have learned a lot from listening to her sing gospel. Mahalia grew up in New Orleans, Louisiana, the city where jazz was born and where there is still good music and good food for per block than any other place in the world. Her father worked on the docks during the day loading bales of cotton on boats, was a barber at night and a preacher on Sundays. When Mahalia was five years old, her mother died. Her father took her to live with Mahalia Paul, an aunt who lived nearby, and the woman for whom Mahalia Jackson was named. Mahalia never lived with her father again, but she saw him almost every day at his barber shop. Mahalia grew up loving music, and the person she wanted to sing like was none other than Bessie Smith. But Mahalia's aunt was very religious, and she took Mahalia to church every day. When talking about her childhood, Mahalia said that in her church, everybody sang and clapped and stomped their feet, sang with their whole bodies. They had the beat, a powerful beat, a rhythm we held on to from the slavery days. And the music was so strong and expressive, it used to bring tears to my eyes. It was in church that Mahalia first started singing. She dropped out of school after the 8th grade and went to work doing people's laundry. Mahalia began hearing stories from relatives and friends about how good life was in Chicago, Illinois. When she was 16, another aunt, Hannah, took her to Chicago to live. Once there, Mahalia joined a gospel group and a church choir while working during the day as a maid in hotels. It was in Chicago that Mahalia got a chance to see her idol, Bessie Smith, who came to town to put on a show. Years later, Mahalia remembered that Bessie filled the whole place with her voice, and I never went home until they put us out and they closed up for the night. 
Mahalia's singing brought her to the attention of Thomas A. Dorsey, who directed a number of gospel choirs in Chicago. Dorsey was the father of gospel music, but earlier in his life he had been in the pianist for Ma Rainey, the blues singer Bessie Smith had traveled with. He began talking to her out-of-town churches for concerts, and her reputation began to grow almost as fast as you are. In 1946, Mahalia's first record was released. She would go to the bottom, the most famous gospel singer in the world, and in 1976, she received the Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award. Mahalia was a close friend of Martin Luther King Jr., and at the and at the March of Washington, he asked her to sing right before he gave his famous I Have a Dream speech. Mahalia Jackson had a big voice, and she could go from a high note to a low one as easily as you put your foot in front of the other. She could hold a note until you thought she could run out of breath, breath and she could put together a lot of notes in a line of music that would take your breath away. And she did it as easily as a, as a cloud floats across the so sky. When I was a teenager, I was attending a meeting in Chicago with my church youth group. Mahalia came to our meeting and sang a few songs. I knew who she was, and I'm sorry now that I didn't have sense enough to appreciate listening to one of the greatest singers of the 20th century. I hope you won't make the same mistake if you get the chance to hear some of the great singers of today. I would like you to watch this video a total of three times. So you've watched it once so far, I'd like you to restart the video and watch it two more times before you move on to the next activity.